Hello, my name is Allison Tiemann, and I'm the founder of Honey Badger Radio. Today, I'm going to be reviewing I Was a Promiscuous Teen, and oh, oh, an open letter to all the men from my past. Sorry, this is a very inconvenient heading. All right, so I figured out what's going on with this blog. I believe that the woman who wrote this article is named Marin... Marengay, Marengi, Goodyear, Marengini, Mary, okay, M. Goodyear. Her name is M. Goodyear. This is the woman who wrote the blog, who allegedly looks like this at 15. I'm probably going to go to hell for saying this, but this girl has predator eyes. And it, it's quite a read, uh, quite a read indeed. It's on the Marengini... Marigini Goodyear Art blog. No idea what's up with that. But uh, uh, before I begin, I have no idea what's happening with Carl Benjamin Sargon's Patreon account. I'm just noting it because I know it's huge news right now. And yes, I am concerned about it because I think Carl may actually be less extreme than I am. So, who knows what's going to happen with the Honey Badger Radio Patreon account. Um, If you want to switch your pledge over to feedthebadger.com, that comes to us directly. That would, if you don't want to stay with Patreon, that's that's our alternative. So, switch your pledge over to feedthebadger.com. Anyway, let me continue with this, with this article. I was a promiscuous teen, an open letter to all men from my past. Posted October 12th, 2018. From the time I was 13 on, I was a promiscuous teen. I'd like to say that at some point I learned from my mistakes, but after these last couple weeks, my past came barreling back to the forefront of my brain. And it's clear to me that the behaviors I learned in my teens never really ended. They went with me into my 20s, 30s, my marriage, how I parented my daughter. It's all right there in front of me now, like a glaring light that I just realized has been on and blinding me my whole life. Dear all the men from my past. Before your instinct to defend yourself kicks in, it's important for you to know that I don't blame all of you. I have no desire to live in anger or point fingers. This is not the purpose of this letter. Please read the above sentences twice. A few times, maybe. It's 100% true. However, I do not, do not confuse my desire to live at peace, free from anger, as me saying that you are negate of any responsibility. There are many of you who I do blame and hold responsible. So, in other words, her second sentence directly and completely contradicts The first sentence, she is doing this because she wants to live in anger and point fingers. And what makes it really incredibly egregious, this whole thing that she's doing, just sort of distasteful. I don't even know if distasteful captures it. Grotesque is you'll find out later on and she hides it in, in the depth of this piece that she never actually told any of this to the men she had sex with, to the young men that she had sex with. She never told them that she was afraid. We, I have no idea if she told them that her age. It's never really clearly indicated. So she told them nothing about her actual mental state. And yet, they are to blame for not accommodating it, not picking up on it with the, you know, the telepathy that God gives all men at birth. And making their decisions to have sex with her based on that, on, on those, those thoughts she never expressed. So she's pointing fingers at men she never informed of any of this. <laughs> oh, man. She's making them take responsibility for something she never communicated to them clearly. She's blaming them for that. Yes, there is one person to blame for this. One person. One person very clearly to blame for all of this. One. I'll I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer who that person is. And I just find it astounding 
that she lays out exactly what she's doing, which is blaming and pointing fingers at people who, men who never knew what was going on in the first place. You know, she never informed them of things that might actually be, you know, pertinent to their own consent to having sex with her. No, nope, she didn't. This isn't about blaming them, though, even though it is about blaming them and blaming them for something they could not have known about. Some of you took advantage of a young girl with a substance abuse pro problem. Some of you were older and thought because I looked and acted older than I was that it was okay to have sex with me. Now, the implication here is you told them your age, but considering later on you say you didn't tell them anything, at this point I don't know what to say. Did they know? what your age was or were they just assuming it based on the fact that you were drinking booze and you looked older? In which case, I can't really blame, I can't say they're doing something if they don't know your age. How are they supposed to be to blame for having sex with someone underage? Especially when it looks, sounds like you're in a situation where you should be of age. I know that it's a strict liability crime, but is it a strict liability morality? Uh, at least that's what you said to me. You're so mature. Is that how you justified yourself? Truth is, I'm not too sure what would make an 18-year-old have sex with a 13-year-old or a 19-year-old with a 14-year-old or a 24-year-old with a 15-year-old. Does it matter to you what the age differences are? Did they know the age difference? You know, and the reason why I ask this is because later on you say you didn't tell them. You didn't tell them stuff. Did you not tell them this? Were they supposed to intuit it? Was this another aspect of telepathy? It's not specified, so I'll leave it at that. No, don't have sex with underage men, boys or girls. Period. Like, just don't do that. It's stupid. And it's unethical, so don't do it. But I don't know if that's what happened here. I don't know if they knowingly did this. Or those of you who took advantage of me when I was completely inebriated. Mornings when I woke up in an empty bed without pants on. Not even really sure who had been in the bed with me. Um, maybe you crapped your pants? And somebody was like, I don't really want her to have to sleep in her own shit. And the rest of them were like, oh god, the drunk girl shit her pants again. What do we do? Well, we'll take the pants off and throw it in laundry. You know, maybe something like that happened. You do say you don't know what happened. Like, you, you say your pants are off. Doesn't necessarily mean someone had sex with you. Like I said, drunk girl could have shit her pants. Your friend said, you know what? We can't sh just let her lie in her own shit. Nice friends. To do something like that. For those of you who took me out and drank with me to excess and then thought it okay to have sex with me leading up to moments of my coming to alone in a room at a party not really sure what happened at all so you're both drunk and you have sex how do you know you didn't rape him like you, you said you blacked out how do you know he wasn't like crawling to try to get away from you and you just kept coming you know you don't know so you're just assuming that he was the one who was the aggressor, not you. You're assuming that. And also he's drunk. So I guess when two drunk people have sex, the woman is raped and the man is a rapist by default. Some of you I cared for and was desperate for you to care for me. Some of you, with whom I shared a mutual sexual desire, are at least as much of one that a young teen can have and understand, I had fun with, only to realize that it was all it would ever be. So I'm reading between the lines here. Some of them, you were a booty call, and to some of them, they were a booty call to you. Okay. And some of you actually cared about me. Why didn't you stay with those ones that actually cared about you? Or the ones you, you shared a mutual desire, but you suddenly realized, oh, I don't know like, if you can be my boyfriend, even though we've had sex. I'm just not interested. Whatever the case may be, past sexual traumas have been shoved in all of our faces these past few weeks. 
and many of us are reeling from the things that we haven't thought about in years, or maybe just swept under the carpet and thought that it wasn't a big deal, unaware of the daily emotional strife that has been caused from it. I've heard situations described that I have experienced in my past, now talked about as violations, and it never occurred to me that they were until now. Maybe they're not violations. Maybe somebody's being excessively uh, opening up the net a little too wide for the term violation. But I'm not, so you had sex with men, with young men and other men, and apparently older men, but we don't know if they knew you were a kid. And some of them you had an attraction for, but realized you could never relationship with. Some of them cared for you. You obviously didn't end up in a relationship with them. And some of them you wanted a relationship with. None of this is a violation. But I, I am really interested to point out that based on this paragraph, you had sex with some young men who wanted to be with you and cared about you. And that didn't happen somehow. Apparently, because you realized it couldn't be, you decided you didn't want a relationship. At least that's how I'm interpreting when I hear only to realize, only I only realized that it was never to be. Like, I realized that this relationship wasn't going to happen. They may have wanted it, but I realized it wasn't going to happen. And of course, you're saying that some of them cared about you, but the relationship didn't happen. Ah, oh, what I want you to all to know is that it is a big deal. Are you actually saying that? I'm wondering if right here, I have this little niggling sense that maybe you're saying, oh yeah, we all mutually screwed each other over. I screwed you guys over because I left you when you wanted to have a relationship. Maybe I pushed sex on you when you guys weren't really into it. You know, maybe I did something when I was drunk that I regret. Like, it is that, I know that's not where she's going. I, I, I'm, I'm full of shit here. I know already that she's, she, doesn't, she doesn't think this is a two-way street. It's just her. These guys taking advantage of her. It has been, it has had long-lasting ramifications on my self-esteem, my decision-making, and my sexual and mental health as an adult. I may not blame all of you for the past, but if another generation of men, see, I told you, are raised thinking that this type of sexual behavior is okay, that is a problem, and one I do put directly on you. Okay, fair enough. If they knew that you were underage, they shouldn't have had sex with you. That isn't clear that they did. And later on, you say you didn't tell people. You didn't tell the men you had sex with about this stuff, about concerns pertinent to the consent involved. So I don't know if I can really assume that they knew. I can't condemn them for doing something when they did not know if you were underage. You need to make that clear. Now that you have, you've got, definitely, old Older people shouldn't be having sex with underage kids. But the rest of this, the rest of this, what you've described, two drunk teenagers having sex, him just as drunk as you, you having sex and deciding you don't want a relationship with him, them him having sex with you and deciding he doesn't want to have a relationship with you, Waking up without your pants on, with no way of knowing why your pants were taken off, okay? All of this stuff, I don't see how they're to blame for it. How men are to blame for it. And if another generation of women are raised not knowing how to use their voices, that's an issue as well and one that you also have to take responsibility to rectify. No, actually, the women do. You need to raise your voice. You have to take responsibility for that. I was a very confused girl who wanted attention and love. Rarely did I say no. Rarely did I push you away. Okay, but what happened when you did? What happened when you said no? What happened when you pushed them away? If... By process of elimination, knowing that if you had an experience in which you said no and pushed him away, that he continued, 
that would be in this article, I'm guessing that when you said no and pushed these young men away, they stopped. If I started to say no, I was easily swayed once a bit of pressure was applied. Like what? Like what kind of pressure are we talking about? A bit of pressure. I doubt a bit of pressure refers to things like I got a gun, I'll stab you, you'll lose your job, you'll get a worse grade, that kind of thing. I'm, I'm guessing a little bit of pressure is, ah, oh, but come on. I mean, fact is, I didn't feel like I could say no, and yet you did. I mean, rarely means at some point you did say no. Rarely you pushed someone away. Rarely. You rarely. But that means at one point you did. One point you said no. One point you did push someone away. Because that suggests at some point you did, right? Even if it was rare, one point you did it. What happened then? Okay? What happened at that point? Oh, my God. Rare does not mean never. And you need to explain. I didn't feel like I could say no, and yet you did at some point. That saying no meant never having love. That it was better to just let you do what you want rather than say no. That the way to get love was to be amenable. The way to make you stay was to put out. But none of you ever stayed. How about the ones who cared about you? Or the ones you had fun with only for you later to realize that you couldn't have a relationship with them. Would, would they have stayed? The reason I don't blame all of you is that we live in a society where I unknowingly was taught to please men and where men, perhaps at times unknowingly as well, have, a, have an expectation of women being agreeable to meeting all of their needs without argument. Could you, could, could anybody who believes this kind of stuff explain just just give me an example of where they learned this. That women are expected to just give men whatever they want. I just like, like, could you show me, I don't know, a movie, a video? Uh, not, not a situation where our ideas about, about men and women's interactions have changed. But literally, bald-faced, a man comes up to a woman, demands something. She does it. And he's not portrayed as a villain. Like, just, just, just expectation. You do this. You are my servant. You do it. Show that to me. Show me a positive male character who does that. Show it. Show it. I want to see it. I want to see evidence of this. Because so far, I haven't seen evidence of this. However, I do see evidence of something interesting in the reverse. And that is the nature of the word man versus the nature of the word woman. In order to be a man, you have to be of service. Unlike a good man, a bad woman doesn't lose her gender identity because it is innate. It is biological. Whereas a man's gender identity is conditional on serving others. Oh my God, you guys, you're just so loud and obnoxious. Closing the door, you filthy, filthy beasts. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so where was I? Oh, yes. The word man is conditional on service. In other words, in order to earn his positive gender identity, a man must serve others. A woman has no such requirement. She just has to grow up and become biologically a woman or pass physically as one. Were my, parents, were my parents direct messengers of this? No, but it was all around me in magazines, images, TV shows, and movies. Okay, show me this shit. Show, me, show it. I want some evidence. The realization that one of my favorite John Hughes movies portrays date rape never occurred to me until someone wrote a blog post about it last week. Okay, I'm going to look this up. John Hughes... Date rape movie. Doobity doo. Uh, how John Hughes movies ruined an entire generation of men. 
Uh, oh, 16 candles. Rape is a given. When one is efficiently dating, rape privileges may be a given, but a gentleman never acts on them. Well, that was a bit blackly, black comedic, but he didn't do it because he was a good guy. So what you're saying is that, what? There's an expectation that men rape, but good guys don't? Okay, well, I guess feminism officially supports date rape. Uh, pretty in pink who thinks degrading a woman. Oh, God. This is just irrelevant. We are being told about blatant attacks, horrendous sexual violations, where women feel their lives are in danger, and this type of behavior is obviously abhorrent in a black and white sort of way. I'm just going to pause here for a second. The statistics are pretty clear. We could fairly safely say that there is a, a very significant rate of, se rate of sexual assault of men and boys. Quite possibly, it is equal to the rate of sexual assault of, men, of women and girls. And the people doing the raping are women. But you don't hear these stories because boys and men who are raped by women do not feel empowered to ever speak of it. So there is a man just like this girl, perhaps even one of the drunk young men taken advantage of in this situation, who could be writing this exact letter, but won't because his gender role is to take responsibility. And in fact, if a woman wants him sexually, his gender role is to say, I am grateful for that. <sighs> However, there is a huge gray area that needs to be discussed where women may be confused and not communicating what they feel deeply because of social and sexual pressures. And the presumption here is that men don't also have these pressures or even have them more. I would argue that they have them more. They certainly have more pressure not to talk about it. I wanted you to like me. I wanted you to love me. I wanted you to be there. And no, just didn't seem like an option to get that outcome. So you wanted an outcome and you chose not to be clear about what you were actually feeling in order to get that outcome. And then you didn't get that outcome. And now you want to retroactively blame these men for what? For not hearing what you didn't say? It's important for you to know that I was a terrified girl looking for approval. Is that sexy for you? To know that I was most likely full of doubt, self-loathing, and terror when we had sex. I sure hope not. And here it comes. Here comes the megaton that just explodes her self-righteous position right off the map. In your defense, I will say that I never let you know. In this article, this woman has been blaming the men she slept with and she never clearly indicated what was going on in her head, including things that would have been very pertinent to their consent to having sex with her. She never communicated this stuff, but they are to blame. You're despicable. This is despicable. I never learned that it was okay to use my voice, and it's something that is a 42-year-old woman I'm now having to deal with. You're despicable. None of these men knew what was going on, and now you're blaming them. You were the one person in all of these encounters who had the greatest amount of information about them. It was your responsibility to convey it. If a man is in a sexual encounter with a woman and he has information that she does not have that could lead to her doubting, regretting, or experiencing significant negative consequences to that sexual encounter, does he not have an obligation to tell her? I think you would say yes. The fact that you were getting these men 
to have sex in a situation that they may not have consented to. I mean, if you had told them what you actually felt, the presumption here is that they would have stopped. And then you wouldn't have gotten what you wanted out of the whole situation. That's the presumption. If you had told them clearly, they would have stopped. They would have stopped having sex with you and you wouldn't have been able to exchange sex for whatever emotional commitment or relationship that you wanted. So you didn't tell them. Instead, you're going to turn around and 20 or 30 years later, you're going to blame, blame them retroactively for not reading your mind. And people are going to applaud you for it. And somebody by the name of Allison is going to sit there, sit in her freaking office and wonder what the fuck the world is coming to. That one sentence should have negated everything this woman said. Everybody in the comments should have been calling her out and saying, how could you expect these young men, these drunk in some cases, totally out of their mind, drunk young men to be able to read your damn thoughts. And then how could you blame all men? Now, for the fact that you didn't speak. And the reason why you didn't speak, my dear, is because you knew if you said no, they would stop and you would no longer be able to use sex as a bargaining chip. <sighs> what you did has had a long-term effect on my life. You have had a long-term effect on your own life. I've had to fight back from a debilitating alcohol problem that increased greatly during my teen years and didn't stop till I was having suicidal thoughts in my mid-30s. I still live da with daily anxieties, battling and grappling with depression at times. We are now learning that all these are all issues that women who live with past sexual trauma are more likely to have. And think about this. We are also more likely to pass these horrible behaviors down to our children. And then she goes on with what she wants from men. None of which, none of the things that she wants men to do would have prevented those men who didn't know what she wanted from not giving her what she wanted. I mean, I'll just look at one. Look at one. All right. Teach your boys that cornering girls in parties and trying to forcibly kiss and or touch them is wrong. I think every movie in which a villain does that is teaching boys that it's wrong. I mean, that's how you establish a man as a villain. Get him to be sexually aggressive to a woman or aggressive at all. Tell them that if a girl says no and then yes or yes, then no, that there is a conflict brewing inside her. And if there is a conflict, sex is not an option. You know what? I would just tell your boys, if you can't afford a lawyer, don't have sex. There must be clarity and consent before sex. And please tell them that a proper response to a girl saying yes and then no is never, can I just finish? Like I said, you can't afford a lawyer, you can't afford sex. Teach them it's not okay to expose themselves to anyone unsolicited ever, unless you're in a slut walk. Oh wait, unless you're in a slut walk and you're a woman. I didn't grow up with cell phones, but in this case I'm also talking about sending unsolicited photos. Teach them. Boy, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of marketers that are going to go out of business if you can't send people unsolicited na naked photos of women. Teach them that while engaging in sexual activity, consent needs to be asked for again before trying new things. Okay. You didn't clearly, con you didn't clearly convey your consent. You never said no. You really think... If these men said, uh, can I touch you now? You wouldn't say yes. That wasn't the point. That wasn't the problem. The problem is that you were using sex as a bargaining chip. You were using it as a bargaining chip. If in order to use sex as a bargaining chip as a girl, you had to say yes to every aspect of a sexual encounter, you would have done it. You would have done it. You didn't say no. You didn't clearly articulate anything because you didn't want to lose using sex as a bargaining chip. The person who needs to deal with that is you. It's an ugly way to approach your relationships. And not just that. There were men, apparently, who cared for you 
and men who you had sex with who you didn't think you could have a relationship with. So you were giving as good as you got and you were having sex with drunk men. Men who were apparently just as wasted as you were. In all of this, you are an actor. You are making the choices that are creating your world. And your real problem as a 42-year-old woman is you have never realized that the prime mover in your own life is you. I'm not going to go any further with this. It's too aggravating. So I'm going to leave it there. Once again, if you don't want to support us on Patreon, go to www.feedthebadger.com. Every little bit helps. Right now, I'm trying to get proper internet into the Badger Cave. If I find out anything new about Carl and Sargon and his situation, I'm sure I'll tell it to Brian, and Brian will tell you guys. Also, this evening, there will be a Today in Men's Rights, or This Week in Men's Rights. We'll be covering Justin, uh, Justin Trottier's new initiative, Him Too, which is really pertinent to this particular article. Him Too. The fact that men's voices, men as sexual assault survivors, need to come into the picture. They can't just be seen as predators. In fact, men are far more likely to be raped than to be rapists. And yet we have continuous articles like this in which a not-raped-at-all woman expects men from her past to take responsibility for reading her own mind. And this is an acceptable voice. Nobody calls her out for that. I mean, come on. If she didn't tell them, how would they have known? Anyway, Justin Trachi has a new initiative to bring attention to men who are victims of sexual assault. It's called Him Too. He's going to be putting up some, I believe, radio ads in the Toronto area. He also, the CAFE, Canadian Association for Equality, has recently received a $23,000 grant to study domestic violence, male victims of domestic violence, and I believe there are some other items of note for the British men's rights activists. So please go to here-ish, somewhere up there, and watch that stream. Peace out.